there are supposed to be five lectures included in the first topic, but your first prelim exam will consist of at least topic one, topic two, up to topic three. Okay. So we are to discuss this time your vectors and the geometry of space. So we'll start with the vectors in space. You know what a vector is? So we're going to start first with vectors in space. So for a single variable, you actually have your simple, your, your number line. So if you have a number line like that, then you can have a vector on this based on on the origin here and from the origin you can have a, a position vector okay we call that position vector if it's actually from the origin for a two-dimensional coordinate system or if you have your euclidean plane or sometimes it's called the cartesian or rectangular coordinate system then you have if you have a 2d then you have your vector say this one is your vector this is your position vector say u okay then for a 3d for a three-dimensional you have your vector v okay vector v is now denoted by say you have your a sub one e sub one you have c or a sub one and most of the time it's denoted by the same letters a sub one a sub two and you have your Okay. So, 3D, you know how to sketch your three-dimensional coordinate system. You have your x-axis, you have your y-axis, and you have your z-axis. So this is how it is done. You have actually what you call your x-y plane. This is the plane which is parang nasa floor, no? This is your x-axis. So, this is your x-y plane one and you have your yz plane the yz plane is based on this is your y axis and this is your z axis so this is your this one is your yz plane now this side so how about your xz plane this is your x and this is your z so this is your xz plane so itong parang nasa floor that is supposed to be your xy plane uh, you are familiar, I hope, with your right-handed coordinate system, with, or in you make use of your uh, index finger, which goes towards the positive x-axis, the middle finger for your y-axis, and the thumb goes to your z-axis. We call that your right-handed coordinate system. No. We formally define what a non-zero vector is. So a non-zero vector is a directed line segment drawn from a point P wherein you have your, what we call your initial point. And Q is your terminal point. Now with P and Q being distinct points. So mean to say, that's what we did earlier. If you have a point P, remember that P is a point on if it is a 3D, then you would have coordinates A sub 1, A sub 2, A sub 3. But if it is um, a two-dimensional coordinate system, then you would only have A sub 1 and A sub 2 for your points. So I'll be a point P from this point and a point Q, which is your terminal point. So if this is your, then you can call this as a vector PQ. Okay, that's your vector PQ, wherein the initial point is written first and the terminal point is written next. Now, for a vector, its properties is that it has to have its direction, so it should have a direction, and it should have its magnitude. Okay. Can you give me an example of a vector based on this definition? It has a magnitude and it has a direction. Anyone? Velocity, ma'am. Yes, very good. Velocity. What else aside from velocity? So you have your velocity vector. Why velocity? Because you actually have a magnitude as well as a direction. 
For example, 400 kilometers per hour in the direction of what? So, going east. Okay. Now, how about uh, weight? Is it a vector? So, 500 pounds. Is that a vector? Magdili ba? Dili. Okay. Kung sa may present lang ato, na alang siya'y magnitude. Ah, oh, yes. But it has no direction. Okay? So, those are supposed to be... Uh, what other examples? Pwede po ang... So, so aside from velocity. Acceleration. Acceleration. Force. Diba? Mga force. Diba? May... May, 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 meron siyang magnitude as well as meron ding direction. So, to indicate the direction of a vector, we draw an arrow, that's what we did earlier, from its initial to its terminal point. So, magnitude and length ang kailangan, di ba, for a vector. So, again, this is for the 1D, and this is for a 2D, and this one is for a 3 dimension. What is the magnitude of a zero vector? The magnitude is actually equal to zero. How about its direction? Because it's a, a zero vector, then you only have a point. If it's a point, then actually some, some text says it's not well defined. Others use the term that it is uh, towards any direction. Because it's a point. Lang siya eh. So there is such a thing as your zero vector which has no direction or no well-defined direction, but it has a magnitude equal to zero. Two vectors are equal if they have the same magnitude and the same direction. So any vector with zero magnitude is also equal to your zero vector. So if you take a look at this, this vector W, okay, and vector u are supposed to be equal. Any u and w. What about the vector the vector v? Why is Dili. Dili. Why? Why? It's in like direction. Uh, yes, because of its direction. Although the same and magnitude, the direction is different. So they are actually not now, we will formally define later on the definition of your magnitude or the formula for the magnitude. There are infinite number of vectors for a given magnitude and direction. And those vectors all being equal and differing only on by their initial and your terminal point. So that's what we had earlier. Your vector, vector here, vector W. It's actually the same as your, what vector is that one? Vector u. So if we take vectors that starts from the origin, then we have what we call your vectors in standard form or in standard way. Because we know that coordinate system has actually an origin. Again, as a recap, your vectors are represented by directed line segments. And then the length of the right of the line segment is the magnitude of the vector. And the direction of the line segment is the direction of the vector. But note that vectors do not impart any information about where the quantity is applied and any directed line segment with the same length and direction will actually represent the same vector. So if you take a look at this vectors, notice that all of these vectors represent the vector negative 2 phi. Why? It, it goes, goes to the left, two units, and goes up for there, one, two, three, four, five, five units. So each of the directed line segments in the sketch are 
what we call your representations of this vector. So any, any, any of this can actually represent the vector negative to five. So two units to the left and five units up would give you these different sketches, but it's actually the same vector. But you have to be very careful in trying to distinguish the notation. When you denote negative 2, 5, this is simply a point if you use a parenthesis. This is a point on the Cartesian coordinate system. But when you have this type of notation, then this is a notation for a vector. So this is the vector earlier mentioned, which is your negative 2, 5. But getting points negative 2, 5, this one is a point. But it's a coordinate system. And then it's a point. Lang na siya. They have 1, 2, negative 2. And they have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's your x-axis, your y-axis, and kanina point, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is simply your point, negative 2, 5. So be very careful with using this notation, parenthesis, and this notation. So a representation of the vector VA1A2 in two-dimensional space is any directed line segment AB. Now we had discussed that one earlier. So likewise, representation of the vector VA1A2A3. So if it's a 3D, then we have actually three components here. So you are familiar with the position vector earlier because I told you your position vector would actually be from the from the uh, origin. The representation of the vector A1, A2, A3 that starts at the point A00. Remember, this is a point. It's not a vector. So it's a vector A1, A2, A3 because it starts at 0, 0. So how do we denote AB? This vector AB is actually equal to V, can we write it as V, wherein the initial point, we know that the initial point is A and the terminal point is B. So if you have the vector AB, that is, you subtract the points in the coordinate system, from the terminal points. You have B sub 1, component per component. B sub 1 minus A sub 1, B sub 2 minus A sub 2, and B sub 3 minus A sub 3. Remember that the direction, uh, the this vector AB is not the same as the vector BA. In fact, your vector BA has a terminal point equal to A and is uh, initial point is at B. Are you still with me? Yes, po, yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then, so take some example. You have two negative seven zero. These are points, not points. Not sila. To one negative three negative five. So you're asked to give the vector for each of the following. I'll just, I'll just take the first example, then you can read through the other one. So the vector from 2, negative 7, 0 to 1, three, ne 1, negative 3, negative 5 will now simply be, you start with this one. This is the terminal point. So 1 minus 2, comma, you will have negative 3, negative 7, this one, and 5, 0 here. So, I'm sorry, negative 5, 0. So, that, that vector is negative 1, 4, negative 5. How about the magnitude? So, for the magnitude, it is defined to be equal to, the notation of magnitude is this, the lawang bar, and then the vector inside. So, the magnitude for the vector a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, is given by the square root of a sub 1 squared plus a sub 2 squared plus a sub 3 squared. So if we are asked to compute for the magnitude of A, then that should be magnitude of A is equal to the square root of 3 squared. A1 squared man, so you will have 3 squared 
plus negative 5 squared plus 10 squared, which is equal to the square root of 9 plus 25 plus 100. Oh, which is 100, oops, 134. I will leave C, Madeleine, C and C and D. Let's compute for U, vector U. For the magnitude of U, again, what do you do? Simply equal to, from the formula, 1 over square root of 5 squared plus the negative 2 over square root of 5 squared. But that should give you equal to 1 over 5 plus, this is negative 2. So negative, it becomes 4 over 5, which is equal to square root of 5 over 5. But that is equal to 1. Take a look on the 1. So any vector with magnitude 1 is called your unit vector. So which of the vectors from example 2 are unit vectors? If you take a look, these are unit vectors. B and D are supposed to be your unit vectors. How about the zero vector? The zero vector should have a magnitude equal to 0. So these are your zero vector. Remember, magnitude 0, the magnitude of W here is W. 0, 0 is 0. And the magnitude of um, I, which is given by this is, um, basis, we will discuss this again later, is equal to 1. Uh, here, this one. We call I equals 1, 0, 0 to be your standard basis vector. Okay, you have your standard rate basis vectors. In 3D, you have I as 1, 0, 0, J as 0, 1, 0, and K to be your 0, 0, 1. In 2D, you will only have I and J. So I is 1, 0, and J is 0, 1. So we have the first lecture done. Let's see?